please. Right, right. I'll let Lorelai drive around and we'll start seeing what we can find. As yeah. always, if you have any questions, either talk to us directly or just put it in the chat um, and we'll make sure that we get around to you. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, let's start. I've, we're from a random sample. I've zoomed in at 400, so not too far. And already we can start to see some stuff. So, I'm just going to go to this thing first. So obviously we this is all marine stuff. So this is from a salty water environment. So this huge crystal, cubic crystal here is salt. So that there, there's that. And then so it's the only thing in here that me and Laura and I know at the back of our hands. Yes. Is we can find salt crystals and we can work around everything else. But then next to it we have these kind of things. I'm gonna to need to focus. So don't mind me doing this. Thanks. There's a couple of different ways we can focus yeah. um, the beam. So we can do digital focus, we can jiggle it around, make sure the beam's in the right shape, yeah. in the right position in the column. And it all kind of adds together to make nice crisp images like this one. Yeah, so bye. If we slow the, slow the, the scan down. down as well, we get another crisper image. So we have two things here. Take a photo. Yep. Um, it's as we image today, um, Lorelai will be taking photos and we'll be putting these all into a little booklet which we'll send around uh, the whole attendee list. Um, oh, that's going to keep coming up in the middle there. That's not there go. Let's move that. Let's move that. Let's save it. So much like the last one, we'll send around the recordings, we'll send around a little booklet of everything that we've done, um, as well as information for our next microscopy live in December. Uh, yeah. Look right here, we've got a copper lip before. It's the nice little round guy on the right hand That's side. So it's made up of individual plates. I think. Yeah, so they are a, I think most of the stuff we're going to be looking at are types of plankton. So this is a phytoplankton. Sorry, I have my notes here. So, <laughs> um, that has these little shells are made of calcium carbonate. Shells, coccolith lifts. So it's coccolith before, and the things around them are coccoliths. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm going on my very <laughs> limited knowledge. I have done some research, but yeah. I cannot guarantee. Sorry, like, the benefit just... of working in a lab like this is we end up looking at all sorts of things. So it's not just our own specialties. Uh, we end up accommodating um, pretty much everything that can fit inside an SEM. We will give it a go. Yeah. So on the right, the dinoflagellate. Dino dinoflagellate, I think. It seems to be consistent, left, even. consistent with all of the research I've done, yeah. which is another algae. I think everything is just going to be a phytoplankton algae. Yeah. Uh, could we measure how? Measure. Yeah, yes, that's a good thing. Give a reference. Let's do that. This will give us an idea of just how small these things are. So from end to end, that is 18 micrometers. So, how many micrometers are there in a millimeter? Not. I want to say there's a thousand. <laughs> I should know micrometers. This. This to, we should know this. But incredibly embarrassing on our point. I suppose we look at small Micron stuff so far. So often. Yeah, no, you were right. You yeah, were right. thousand. So, yes, there's zero point zero one eight of a millimeter. Uh, it's pretty tiny. Very tiny. Hence why you can't see them when you're in the sea. Yeah. We're absolutely swimming in all of these. They're yeah. everywhere. They uh, can't see. Um, what am I doing? Should we find something? Find something else. else. So we've got a couple of different scan speeds um, on the SEM, which you'll see Laura live flick through as she drives around. So we have a quick one uh, where the beam is moving across the sample quickly. Um, this is really good, basically, for us just to find things uh, so we don't need to wait too long for an image to form. And you can see like it's pretty instantaneous. Um, Oh, there's some weird stuff here. Let's focus. Yeah. Right. So I'm now just zooming in. Yes. We zoom right in. We can actually yep. get the focus good. So whenever we do our focusing, we use this little reduced window. Um, and again, this is because it makes it's a smaller area for the beam to scan through, so it takes it's just much faster. Uh, if we were trying to like focus and do fiddly little um, adjustments with a really big picture, it would take forever. So thankfully for us, uh, the JOL software comes with a lot of little tricks inbuilt into it. 
So you might be able to hear Lorelai dialing around on all our different buttons and options. Yeah. We're also having a day where I am just struggling to focus <laughs> the microscope. Ah, uh, some days it happens. And this one is notoriously fiddly. Yeah, so there we go. You can see the slower scan speed kicking in there and the image gets much crisper. Yeah, so this I think is another phytoplankton again, obviously, but this is a diatom. So they're they are like a phytoplankton algae that have a silicious shell. So this um is made of silica, um, which looks very pretty. So yeah. um my fun fact is what I remember learning about these is they these look beautiful under a light microscope. They refract in different colours, they're very pretty. The Victorians used to make art out of them. So if you search up diatom art from the Victorian period, you'll get loads of little beautiful pictures because they're all quite symmetrical and there's loads of different shapes as stars as circles <laughs> they're just they're very pretty mm. and they're like one of the highest form like purest forms of silica in the world i can believe that shells. i remember that being yeah. cool they're very economically useful also detail in that structure though yeah keep all sorts of this. things yeah and they also these 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 produce 20 to 50 percent of the oxygen on the planet yeah Every That's why year. marine health is very important um, for climate and maintaining climate. Uh, largely because it's just the amount of plankton. What are all the lines in the background? Coming from the plankton? Oh, well, like the those lines. little fibres? These like fibres things, man. I think so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so those... Are they attached? I assume they are attached. I think sometimes a lot of these um, marine things will have lots of really long like arms or um, flagella or lines kind of just to help them kind of float and stay in the, the water column just mm -hmm. so they can float around so they're not like on the seafloor or they're not floating so they can just kind of hang around in the middle yeah. doing their thing. We get carried around by the current a bit easier I think. Yeah. Um, oh but no, there are some spectacularly creepy examples um yes, which in these filter papers. I think which have many more legs than they need to for small floaty things. Like this one this is quite one. upsetting. Yes. And this is, what have we got, coccolithophores? Yes, I want to say coccolithophores. With so, legs. With uh, legs. So this top thing here is kind of, will be like a ovally shape. Mm -hmm. And then this kind of comes around in a circle and they all stick out. I'm being so, very expressive in my So sea today. urchin style. Yeah. So you'll see in some of these samples, it kind of looks like they've deflated. Um, and that's basically because they have deflated. Um, these things are like floating around in the water. Obviously, we can't put wet things inside the SEM. Um, yeah, so a lot of them will look like um, sort of sand balloons at this point. Um, yeah, so if I go. But these things are tiny because that salt crystal there is tiny. Tiny, so yeah. So we've got a 10 micron scale bar at the bottom there. So that's yeah. 0, 0. Yeah, so this one. bar, well, as, whereas I change the zoom. Okay. Yeah. It will change, change in size. And then it'll go to 100 microns, yeah. or if I zoom in, loads, really close, it'll, it'll get go to one light. micron, and then we'll go into nanometers. But I don't think we'll need to go that far in today. That. Does anybody, if I zoom out completely, does somebody want to make a suggestion on where to go? And then maybe. And we do have other filter papers in as well. So yeah. for whatever reason, this particular one isn't doing it for you, we can try another one. Yeah, so I think we've got four in today. Yeah. I've had a look at all of them. They all have quite a lot of different things on them. Yeah. Uh, so feel free to suggest a quadrant. Um, and we'll go have a look, see what we can find. Uh, there's a lot of diverse stuff Top in here. Left. Top left. Let's go. Let's... Ah. There's lots of different ways to drive an SEM. We've got buttons, we've got right. dials, we can click and drag. Um, so they're actually quite user-friendly machines, which is nice. Yeah. Oh, we have a weird mass of coccoliths. So the shells that make up coccolith for. And a diatom? And it's a weird thing, spiky thing. Yeah, see, so it's a sad balloon. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. There might also be pollen in this sample because oh, that's true, yeah. you can also find a lot of terrestrial pollen in seawater. This is going to keep coming up, up oh, there, which fine. is going to be very annoying. But oh well. What's like we said, so was, every time we find something fun uh, that we want to look at, we're going to take a photo of it as well. Um, and we'll compile them all yeah. into a nice little brochure for you. Ah, so here, 
they're, they're breaking up and deflating a little bit, but we have two different copper local cores. So you can see that this one has got larger shells and it's like it's got quite a lot of spot, quite spotty in texture. And then this one is a lot smaller and has a lot smoother, so it's kind of bit weird. And there's maybe some things that kind of look like mushrooms, it's got like little spikes. Looks like a slice of a kiwi. Ah, that does, yeah. 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 Um, normally, mostly copper lipids around here. That's very deflated, very spiky. Ah. I want to say this is another different deflated dinosaur shape. I think so. It's got kind of like a baskety barrel shape. So often when we're doing this sort of imaging, we have to refocus for every new thing that we look at because they're all slightly different heights and slightly different shapes and textures. Um, so that means if because it's not a perfectly flat sample, we have to refocus a lot. Uh, if it was like completely nice and smooth and flat and we get it in perfectly level, uh, you can focus once and just have a yeah, whale of a time driving around. If you're looking at the same depth of field at the same time, everything, yeah. all the heights are different, so you have to focus for a different height. We have to choose which bit you want to focus on sometimes. Uh, after a while, it just kind of gets into like muscle memory. You can just sort of yeah. power through and do it. There's so much, there's so many salt crystals, and I want to keep looking at them, but I know we <laughs> We're definitely biased towards rocks and rock adjacent things. Yeah. I mean, I like the other stuff. The other stuff looks really cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Like, so I might, if I can remember them every now and then, just say some fun facts. So, the coccolithophores, calcium carbonate, which is most commonly in like limestone and stuff. So, yeah. the White Cliffs of Dover, basically huge rocks made up of coccolithophores. <laughs> You squash enough leaves together, you make chalk. Yeah. So. More spiky things. Yeah. Lots of, there might be lots of like weird bits of sediment as well. Yeah. So. Because these are dried down from seawater, it dries down everything that is in that seawater. So some there might be little bits of sand, uh, might be dust and other things that have been picked up. Yeah. So, yeah, please, if you see something you want me to zoom in on. Yeah, that's quite nice. Um, stop me, because I will just keep going around and see yeah. if I can find good specimens of things. But if there's something that you're like, oh, that could be cool. Do let us know. Just let us know, yeah. So that is, I want to say another diatom and more soft crystals. I think it's a diatom. Soft crystals on soft crystals. Yeah. Zoom in and see. Or not, maybe not. Oh, well. Some nice cubes. Mm -hmm. oh, that's cubes. a nice little barrel. That's, yeah, another same kind of item again. Like, if that was made out of rattan, you could convince me to buy that at a shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, Laura is just refocusing that for us. So you yeah. can see it going in and out of focus. Yeah, so this is me. This is me actually moving the stage. So I'm moving the, when I'm doing this one, I'm moving the sample up and down. Moving the sample up and down because we are set at, so WD here stands for working distance. So that's kind of the, so it's 10 millimeters. So the, the beam kind of focuses at 10 millimeters down from below from the, the gun. Mm -hmm. So me, this is me trying to move the sample up the, Finding that sweet spot. Millimeters, and then I'm going to shift on to our focus, which is just me shifting the beam slightly to adjust its height to get it to focus. And then I do another thing, which is called, which now what I'm doing is called the sticks stigmatization. So this is me shifting the alignment of the beam either horizontally or vertically to get it to 
get the perfect yeah. sweet spot where we get everything in focus. Yeah. But I am struggling. So always try and focus at a higher magnification we want to image at, because then as you pull back into a lower magnification, everything is really nice and crisp. Um, so it just adds an extra layer of like just nice data collection. Yeah. Sometimes you could be sat here for a very long time trying to get things to focus, yeah. because sometimes the, the microscope's just not set up in a way yeah. for the kind of analysis you're doing. Sometimes the samples just don't want to focus, sometimes because they're just chargy. Yeah. So charging, uh, which Laura likes to mention there, is basically what happens when the electrons that we're hitting sample with can't escape properly. Um, so you get buildups of charge, uh, and that creates um, big white splodges on the image, or it can make the image drift and move around, yeah. even though the sample isn't I moving. Can. We're going to have to. We'll see if we can make it happen. Make it happen, because it was doing it a lot yeah, it earlier. Was, we managed to fix it a little bit. So I've just increased the current on the... Um, mm -hmm. So just putting a little bit more welly behind it. So, which was causing it to charge a lot earlier, yeah. but I think it's stabled out a bit. We can kind of see how that's already changed the brightness of contrast. So some things are very, very white now. And it's like a little bit of a wobble, some of the pictures. It just not quite as nice yeah, as we've had it. And start focusing. And that normally causes it to do the thing. Yeah. Okay, we always beg for it not to charge, and then one time we actually want the sample to charge, it just doesn't <laughs> want to do anything. Uh, it's been in the vacuum for a while now, it's probably settled yeah, down a little bit. Down, so. so it's because we're working at vacuum. Um, the longer it stays in the vacuum chamber, generally the better it is. Yeah, uh, we want a really good stable vacuum, we don't want any leaks. Um, we want it to be nice and consistent. So you can, this here is our little monitor, so we can see what the vacuum of the chamber is. So it is at 9.6. 10 to minus 5 if we're doing it in seven figures of Pascal of yeah. Neshet, so that is pretty good. Pretty good. We kind of tend to want, we want it at between minus 4 on this, mm -hmm. so minus 5 yeah. is really good. Oh, there is a circle thing there. And the that instrument is... itself is quite good. If it's not a good enough vacuum, it just will not let you turn it on. Yeah. Although we do have a different microscope called um, our gel 6610, which mm -hmm. has a setting so we can work it back um, at like low pressure so that it's not complete vacuum yep. which we can use for specific things so say we can't coat a sample having a having some pressure in there kind of dissipates the charge so you can look at things that can't be coated say you've got samples that are extremely precious that you can't coat because you would ruin the sample yeah. so biological material powders are really good at low pressure because we've got a pretty solid and well glued down sample today we can do this sort of high vacuum analysis and get some really good crisp images today yeah I think we've got plans to use a 66 in the future microscopy live. Yeah. Uh, so we are slowly going to work our way around the lab. We won't always be on this microscope. Yeah. Uh, this one's just my personal favourite. Yeah. So we, we got 7001. Mm -hmm. We have a six, I'm just pointing to where they are, 6610, which is tungsten. We have another FEG by, which is a Zeiss, which it also has a focused iron beam, which is all very fancy and very clever and very exciting, which we will show you at some point and bring in our. Dan and Tom, our technical specialists, that spend most of their time on that. And then we also have a transmission electron microscope. So that rather than it, like you're putting the electron gun down and it's reflecting off, you make the sample super thin and it just kind of goes through. It transmits through the sample, kind of like a light microscope. So when you're looking at biological samples in the light microscope, how you see in like pretty yeah. much any science lab on TV or something like that. It's kind of like that, but for electrons. It's really good for cells. Cells, yeah, looking uh, at so, tiny, tiny yeah. things. It's got a much higher resolution than how it's frozen. We're a big fan of the 7001. Yes, we both learned how to do yeah. microscopy <laughs> on this just because it's the best for geological samples. Yeah. So we've both gotten very used to this. Yeah. But we're going to have two new fegs and another tungsten. So we're going to have yeah. lots of different things to learn and show you guys. Okay, this is a collection of stuff. So we quite have a lot of things. Clip. 
so all the little shells, salt crystals up here. We have a different kind of diatom, this long thin thing here that's kind of a bit crushed. I think that is a different diatom or a dinoflagellate. Yeah, possibly. It is a mixture of lots of wonderful things. Oh, we've got the probe crown back down as well. Yeah. We'll take a photo that's pretty good though. and then drop it down because that will fire. More focusing. I probably leave it as is. It's actually quite nice yeah, now. Yeah, it is. It was. Now it's not charging. It's yeah, very well. Yeah, this was just <laughs> lovely. Main image moving yeah. everywhere. Light lines on the sample. It was interesting. So honestly, it just there's lots of copper in the sample. Yeah. So here we've got a completely different system one. Like ravioli shaped. Yeah, kind of like yeah, or in little bowls. Yeah. So often when we're focusing, we like to go in both directions. We like to go out of focus one direction, bring it back out of focus in the other. Because that helps you find where the actual good point is. Because often you can get a nice enough image, whether or not that's actually the best focus. Um, you can't really tell until you've seen how bad you can make it. Yeah. So it kind of comes into a muscle memory sort of thing. You count how many turns you do one way, how many turns you do the other way, and you can kind of find like a nice little balance in the middle. That's a question. How long does it take you from getting a sample, clearing it, setting up the microscope to take the first image? Um, um, depends what it is. <laughs> yeah, so for this, these samples, um, Glenn will probably have to correct me because I sample mm -hmm. prep non-squishy things, so I do everything that's not biological. I think this you can get this up and running in like a day, half yeah. a day for these kind of samples because they've got to be fixed. Yeah. Um, so if it's like a rock or something, um, what we do is we cut that and we polish it, which can take a while because we want yeah. a nice smooth surface to get chemical yeah, analysis. So it gets cut, polished, then we embed it because rocks are porous and obviously we're working the microscope yeah. under a vacuum. So any air is yeah. not appreciated. So that gets put in epoxy resin, mm -hmm. vacuum embedded, and then yeah. many hours are spent polishing. Yeah. Um, but from getting, I don't know, if we had like a piece of metal, we can generally put that in um pretty much as is yeah half day thereabouts okay so yeah. i wasn't too far off thank you again um when it comes to putting it into the sem and getting the first picture that can actually be really quite quick um yeah. again it does vary on the sample a little bit so if you have a sample that is quite porous it might take it a long time to pump down or if we have to put it in certain holders um Ooh, okay this is that can like affect things show you what charging looks like this is what charging looks like um so Gemma was saying it's interesting to hear about problems with charging because SEMs always look so perfect. That's because we only ever share the good pictures. pictures. <laughs> you don't see all the ones we take that are terrible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll only ever see the ones that are nicely in focus and are well behaved. So yeah, you can see here this this bright things are all just kind of moving. This yeah. is just where all the charge is just building up. The electrons can't dissipate out freely along the surface and it's just building up and causing bright things. Yeah. So if you rabbit, it's a lot darker. And then move over here because I wanted to look at this because this looks cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so basically we can put a sample into an SEM and pretty much within an hour we can start getting pictures. Um, our new little microscope, the little neoscope, um, that can get you a picture in about 10 minutes because it doesn't have a very big vacuum chamber and we can do that at low pressure. Um, yeah, I've had to go between it because when you first began electron microscope, absolutely loved it. Uh, thank you very much for coming, Mariel. Yeah. Um, We'll send you the booklet as soon as we've got it ready, and yeah. hopefully we'll see you at the next one, uh, which yeah. is a special winter themed. Winter themed. Um, yeah. My class be live. So thank you very much for coming, Mariel. Oh, I was I focused on that and then just walked away. Oh, it happens. My attention span this morning <laughs> is. Uh, That's quite a nice little like acorn shaped one. It is. It's quite cool. It kind of looks like a like a seashell as well. Yeah. It's kind of. Let's get the door.
Yeah, so in true lab fashion, um, <laughs> there's always things happening. Yeah. Let's do that completely, go somewhere else. Does anybody else have any suggestions of where to go or would we like to go onto a different filter paper? Oh, let's see if anybody wants to. Yep, if you want to choose a quadrant. Um, or pick another place to filter paper. We've got four in. Four um, in. We'll call this one number one. Yeah, and pick another number if you'd like. Another filter paper. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Right, I might need to. Yep, both Elaine and Rosie want to go to another filter paper? Yeah, we shall okay. go. Right, so I'm just. So obviously, we're on a microscope. This is quite high magnification, and even at its lowest magnification, we're still, still 25 times which is we're quite still, a lot <laughs> like seeing like three or four millimeters and our filter paper is about one centimeter in diameter so i'm now turned on we've got a chamber scope so we just got a camera in the chamber yeah. which is showing me this main sample thing i would try and move this but it's set up perfectly so i don't think yeah. you want to I don't want to risk missing no, things. So I've got yeah, so many just, things plugged I've in. Just turned the chamber scope yeah. on just like a move around and yeah. navigate. And then... So basically, it gives us a little visual um, into the actual vacuum chamber because we, we can't put a window on an SEM as useful as that would be. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we have like a little camera uh, that basically shows us where the sample, where the holder is, and where the sample is. So when you've got um, a couple of different samples in, it's a good way to try and find the one you want to look at. Oh, so crystal. Oh, it so, makes oh. it look like it has a cigar. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and very easily used. That's the benefit of doing science, where we don't have to produce reports. We're not doing it for clients. We're just having fun. Um, so we can actually just look at things that are interesting and that we think are cool. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Another fun. Yeah, it's a little shape. cigar, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Looks that one's held at shape, it's not like collapsed inwards. Yeah, no, a couple of them kind of collapsed in. Yeah. yeah. These are cool. Dinoflagellate again, which are. Are the sample papers always one centimeter? That probably varies between varies. researchers. Yeah. Um, Ours are one centimeter just because that's the size of the filter, like the filter syringes that we have, and also our um, stubs are one centimeter in diameter. So, so the things we can put the filter papers on to put into the microscope to hold them down. Um, but it will vary between different labs. Um, I think at my previous institution, they often would use a hole punch to cut their own out of a big sheet. <laughs> uh, so very much it varies a lot. Um, but we can get quite large things into the SEM, like Nat's saying, we can get tens of centimeters in if we need to. Yeah. Um, as long as it doesn't hit the sides and it doesn't hit uh, the pole piece itself, we can basically make it fit. Yeah. Um, but for small things like this, there's no point putting it on an A4 piece of paper because uh, it's tiny you'd never find it yeah like we're getting loads of samples from just this tiny bit of paper yeah. so i think having a bigger filter paper would just you'd have lots Probably you'd have lots necessary. of big representative <laughs> sample but i think you might just be oversampling at that point. maybe yeah that's quite a nice one yeah so obviously there's, there's a, we've looked at two dinoflagellates so it's definitely not it so this one which is a kind of a weird shiny shape and yeah. the one which is circular so obviously showing them Different variation in the species of all of these looks very different. Just so many stuff. I'm trying to find like. I mean, that's quite a nice sort of compact one. Yeah, this one looks cool. Very different solid shells. compared to the other one. Yeah. Where the we I am. Even these tiny little things is a lot of variation and diversity. Yeah. There's that tiny little salt crystal in there as well. Oh. <laughs> All of the salt. Yeah, there's a, the other one which is quite floppy, but that's broken. Yeah. Breaking up. 
Have one this side come out. Oh, so it's a tiny one there. Oh no, that's. I think that's sediment. Salt. Some sort of soil. Let's talk with where are the samples from. I'm not sure we know. I don't know. <laughs> Um, these were found in one of the drawers left behind by a researcher. Um, I want to say, because the research is from MBA, I want to say it's from Plymouth Sound, but I mm. wouldn't hold me to that. I probably should have checked the new samples that I knew where they were from. If we find out, we'll put it in an update. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would assume they're probably local. Yeah. Is it black and white because the SEM registers things in black and white or because the sample doesn't have colour? Uh, the SEMs always produce grayscale images. Um, this one does. Um, so it's because it's generating the image based on topography rather than yeah. what the sample itself actually looks like. Uh, so we can do false color images. We can recolor things afterwards. Um, yeah. So for example, if we put in um, two of the same sample, but we like one was red, one was blue, it would look the same in the SEM. Um, so color itself yeah. doesn't come through on this, unfortunately. Yeah, so it's because you're using electrons rather than light. Yeah. So look at it, you're not getting that, the color, the light spectrum to show you the colors, you're just getting pocket. Yeah. So and it saves on printing costs in manuscripts and journals. Yes. They make you pay extra for color printing. And then you can get creative when you want to find yeah. something pretty and change all the colors. Yeah. So our Christmas cards are winter cards are always are uh, an electron image mm -hmm. and there's a lot of false color attached to those so yeah. we get some crazy colored looking things mm -hmm. so if you hear for the one last week we had some quite colorful images and that's because we were using um edf so we we're doing compositional analysis and then that color was being generated by a separate piece of software and it was assigning different colors to different elements uh, but because we're just doing um regular sem imaging this time around um it's all grayscale i'm afraid I'm sure we can colorize some things at some point. Yeah. What is happening there? Oh, yeah, we really are having a bad time. Oh, that's fine. I'm trying to focus on my 3D slope, but it's never fun. <laughs> Well, I was trying to focus at 27,000 times magnification, which is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're doing that so we then when we image back down now, so we're now at 9,000, it's still quite nice and crisp. Yeah, it's not, this one's not the best. It's still a little it's bit good out. enough. Yeah. So our colleagues, Alex and Tom and Dan and Glenn, will probably be like, oh, that's really low magnification, 27,000. Yeah. I'm a geologist. Most I barely get go to is a thousand. Yep. Okay, barely guys. ever go above, above 120. <laughs> I don't have the practice looking at high mag. Well, that looks like a brain. That is... Oh, I don't like that, Laura. Though. Okay. I'll I don't it. like that one. <laughs> Another weird small one. Okay. Which spiky kind of things? Diatoms, I think. Yeah. Nice they match. Yeah, little pair of buddies. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of see how these guys have like deflated as they've been dried out and stuck down. Slightly deflated and mm -hmm. broken, but some difference there. Okay. Once again, another thing I'm not entirely sure about. I wouldn't even know where to start with that. A lot of texture in it, though. Yeah.
Yeah. Right, closing all the way up. Right. Someone tell me where to go. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. But <laughs> no no pressure. Like, top of a sample, bottom of a sample, left, right, another filter paper. Entirely up to you. You can just about make out. Would you do? Uh, you like my different filters done without drawing it out? Um, I assume so. I mean, you can. You can look at these. We wouldn't just because yeah. we we're are the electron microscope cross- people. Um, so we exclusively do the electron microscopes. Um, what the researchers do with their things beforehand is entirely up to them. I imagine there's some checking that they've actually got things in their sample before they give it to us um, and before we electrocute it. Um, Make it sound so painful. It's all. Um, yeah, no, this is sample. Okay, good. Go for a drive. Stuff. Mm. Hopefully, you can see as we zoom all the way out, and then as we zoom back in, actually, just like these things are tiny. Yeah. And then just realize all these holes in the bottom this is the filter paper. So these yeah. holes are just the pores in the filter paper to let all of the liquid stuff, yep, and water. That's how it drains. Yeah. Just super tiny. You can see that as I've moved, like everything's a bit more out of focus because obviously this sound by the sample. Oh, there's like a little spiral leave it. Spiral leave it? Which way? Oh, right by the mouse there. What? This bit? Or... Oh no, where the mouse was in the middle of the screen? Like, oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, that's, that's less exciting than I thought it was going to be. It's like it's the two little less making a little less. Yeah. That's kind of cute. Well, Valentine's card sorted out this year. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, don't worry, it's not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Oh, what is that? Oh, it might just be sideways? Two diatoms. Mm-hmm. One, one, they're kind of breaking. Yeah, of course, because we're looking at a 3D sample, things might be stuck at different angles. Uh, so sometimes it can be quite hard to work out what's actually going on. But the grayscale is quite nice. It gives you quite a good sense of topography and height. It sounds something really funky this morning while we were messing around. Yeah. It's on a different paper. I remember in my test finding some fantastic. I'm trying to find those because those look pretty yeah. cool. They're, it, they're very small in, on a very bit yeah. of paper, so but, it might not actually have them. Yeah, evidence that these things are in fact hollow. They're, there's something you might need something inside yeah. there when they're alive. Other bits of goo, I assume. Mm. The actual, you know. And we think, yeah. definitely tell I do not study these. If I put some lava and I'd be all over that. No <laughs> idea about seawater beasts. I mean, they look really cool. Oh, God. What the? What is, I'm a bit dino flesh of some kind, but this I is a lot be, yeah. Money That's at huge. That's cool. Oh, let's go over to that guy. Yeah. Like his little point. Show the 3D printed ones, which is also color. Oh, yeah. So, let's the last that's. How do I explain this? So, I went on about our um, focused iron beam microscope earlier, which our colleagues mainly use. Um, my brain is going funny. Yeah. But yeah. So basically, with our focused iron beam, we can cut through a sample. Um, and basically what it takes slices away. So it cuts away a slice, we take it a picture, we cut another slice, takes a picture. There's some software you can do some funky reconstructions in, and that will basically make a 3D image. Uh, we have a suite of 3D printers here um, that the boys upstairs have had a nice time playing with. Um, so basically they took that data, turned it into a 3D printer file, and they printed um, oh, a very large like, cockle Yeah, so this 
is Diane's gonna have to tell me how many times the size it is. I want to say stupidly amount, like one and a bit. But my mm -hmm. camera's not focusing. There yeah, there we go. So this has been 3D printed. This is so one that's been cut through. So, so we've seen things like that already today. So we've seen, I think, ones with like the same texture in the same plates. One million times larger. One and a half million times bigger than the original, which so, I can believe. This is completely <laughs> to scale. So this is exactly what it looked like, but just huge. But it's very cool. Yeah. And you can see that it's hollow. So, and Glenn had some explanation explanation yeah. about these up earlier because he seems to, he's our expert. He knows what he's talking about. So, yeah. We do rocks. In the light max script, they are green. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose that makes sense because they're a fiber like so Yeah. So size. Yeah. I remember Gerald saying that they were pink, but. I think it's a good thing, Algae. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, know. I would trust him because this he is like world leading expert in this stuff. But where did the 3D print file come from? Um, so our colleagues uh, used our focused ion beam SEM. So basically that takes um takes a picture, we sort of take a slice off it. So it is a destructive technique. They take another picture, slice, picture, slice, picture. That gets reconstructed. Um, and then uh, we can turn that into a 3D print file. Um, so we do this for fun, pretty much. <laughs> Well, that's a pine cone. That's a straight up pine cone. That's nice though. Yeah. And nice soul crystals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really shows the cubic structure of yeah. a cell crystal. I guess that's what you'd normally like deal with as kind of sort of powdery. Uh, it's nice seeing it in in its real form, I guess. Yeah. Uh, thanks for asking. Is printing available for other labs? Um, you'd have to go uh, through yeah. us, but there's sort of user position and um, user permissions. Yeah, because um, this was done in collaboration with one of our yeah. colleagues who is elsewhere, and mm -hmm. I think they've now moved to a different. I think so. Yeah. So there's some red tape and admin work to get through yeah, first. So obviously it's their data, so we got permission to print yeah. the stuff off. But, but that's a pretty good. It's basically the same, isn't it? I think it's the same. <laughs> I think it's like the same. Yeah. The same, the same species. <laughs> so that's a pretty good match. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get that in. I don't think there's that much diversity in such tiny things. And there yet. Some of them, I think, like, Dino Fungenix has like 2,000 different species. Like, some of them that. have, like, there's a lot of different species yeah. of them. So, makes sense why lots of people dedicate their time to study these. Because they're very interesting. Eye is the species, according to Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah, that's quite good. <laughs> Oh, charging line. There we go. This bright line. Yeah. Different form of charging. Not different form, just different. A little bit of charging. That's okay. That's fine. Oh, this one has spikes. Stick that out. Another little ravioli guy. Yeah. That's quite nice. Yeah. Long diet charms. That's very long. I think it's two. So oh, it's yeah. There. Yeah. Something. What the? What? What is it? It must be a shell for something. I'd assume so. Yeah, but that is funky. I'm gonna have to be doing a lot of research for this book. Then. Yeah, we'll do some background reading first before we send anything out to you. Yeah, to make sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Like, yeah, trying to find different things. Yeah. Using a lot of the same. So that's, that's quite nice. I've well, seen a couple of those that have been deflated, I think. Yeah. That's nice. I'll take a photo of this and then switch to a different. Yeah, and we'll do last five minutes. Yeah. See yeah, if or that. if anybody has any requests, yeah. that's not suggested. See, give everybody a little bit of time. They are visible from space. That is true. That is true. There are some really nice ISS photos um, of algal blooms. Yeah. And I think dinoflagellates are responsible for red tides, the ones that I think are so. quite bad. I did this from my research, but, and I tried to go to reputable sources. So. Yeah. Let's just flip to the final field paper for the last There's five minutes. More of there. those things. Okay. Why did I not notice? Oh, wait. I saw a spiky thing. Oh, that's quite fun. Okay, there we go. I'm looking for one of these. That's this... weaponized. Very shield like plates on that one. Yeah, that's different field paper. See all of the lab stuff on there? Yeah. Some big chunks on that one. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. Right. out. Somebody, if anybody is comfortable, tell me which where which direction I should go in. So final few pictures and then we'll call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> Getting close to the end. In the middle. In the I think middle. we are in the middle. We zoom in. <laughs> zoom in. That is some stuff. Could be anything. Let's see that it's not the sound like in the plated sad side of it. Well, it's like art matter of some sort. Yeah, maybe. It's quite large. Um, oh, got a spiky little dude. I saw none of these when I was doing a test. And oh, I well. <laughs> you can see all the texture in the filter paper as well. Yeah. We have a blob. A little salt hat. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Best of both blobs, that. Oh, it's charged at the end. Yeah, it doesn't like Scale between oh, that's a fun one. Nice. It's very frilly actually around the bottom, isn't it? <laughs> Got a little like ruffle thing in the middle. If anyone has any last minute questions, let us know. Yeah. Um, and if not, we'll find something nice to end on.
say that I'm probably not the type. <laughs> that's fine. I've not had oh, the it's one. One with... of those weird things. That's yeah. quite a nice one. Let's let's go. finish on him. Nice and satisfying. Yeah. Ooh. Let's try them. Let's see if it bounces out. Ah, close. Just that area. Just Very close. Yeah. That looks like a snail. That does look like a snail. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Cool. Then our last minute, if you've got any last minute questions, uh, let us know. Well, thank you very much for coming, Rosie. Good to have you here. Yeah. Um, I should say our next one is the 17th, 17th of, of December. December. Um, and that'll be winter themed. Yes, so um, we have a few ideas, but I think on my booking form, I've got some, like, a question for, like, if you have any ideas of stuff that you specifically want to see, let us know. And it'll be just yep. a bit of fun getting ready for winter holidays yeah. and all of that seasonal goodness. And we'll be kicking off again in January in the new year, so sticking with the last Friday of every month. Um, it'll always be free, it'll always be online, and yep. we'll record it as well. Um hopefully we'll see some of you at the next one yeah um cool so that's it for us thank you very much for coming um and hopefully we'll see you uh next time next time yeah all right more than welcome everyone thank you very much we'll just hang out here for a little bit while everyone leaves yeah in case anybody wants to wait and have some any last minute secret questions secret questions yeah